Good evening and as we continue <laughs> News Geelong here on Channel 31 out of our city of greater goodness, yes, the great city of Geelong. You know that blue and white team that keep winning each week in the AFL? Well, you heard from the acting CEO of the city of greater Geelong, Stephen Griffin, and the fact that we are working in a surplus. That's right, not that dirty word deficit, but surplus. As we continue our budget coverage from the COGG, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking to different ward councillors and the portfolios they represent and looking at the different budget highlights because it is a magnificently put together structure as outlined by Stephen Griffin. Joining us uh, this evening is Councillor Andrew Kados from the Deakin Ward of the City of Greater Geelong and the uh, portfolio holder of Planning and Finance. First of all, to talk about the Deakin Ward, it's a very good morning. Good evening again to Andrew Kados. How are you, Andrew? Good evening, Graham. Pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's all this daylight. I get uh, continually <laughs> mixed up, but we get by, don't we? Andrew, um, first of all, consolidating what Stephen Griffin said, uh, you'd have to be pleased overall, a surplus, a very, very good budget. Must have been a, uh, a thorough process that you went through. It is a long process. You go through all the budget processes started probably back in probably October, November of last year. So it's almost a six month process to get to where we're at. And uh, we've got a $4.54 million surplus. And that's uh, fantastic when you consider uh, you know, we've got these massive deficits for at state and federal level. Um, so it's fantastic to put it in the black and, and actually put it back into uh, infrastructure. And the theme, viewers, is Geelong, the best place to live. And that's one of the reasons it is, because we have got a very solid city of greater Geelong overlooking and uh, looking after our future directions. Looking at the key highlights in the Deakin Ward, uh, Andrew, first of all, our beloved Heighton Reserve. Uh, which uh, down here in Geelong is the home of uh, football Geelong and also the home of the uh, beloved Geelong Falcons, who are also continuing along at an undefeated rate. But uh, money being allocated for new headquarters or extensions to the current height and pavilion to allow for the expansion of junior football, junior netball and the continued development of our great Geelong Falcons program. Yes, Graham. look, we've got the... The, not just the reserve, it's part of a master plan for the entire reserve. So we've got, I believe from memory, it's $429,000 the city's allocated in the budget this year and that'll go towards, and the AFL is, uh, is uh, matching that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the, the club rooms totally remodelled and look, if anyone's been down there to heighten and uh, if their kids play uh, perhaps, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word for it, uh, um, cricket, tennis, any of the cricket, tennis, sports. Um, you know, like if they come down there, if, they, if they've been in the pavilion and seen it, you know, it is a tied pavilion. It was probably built back in the 50s and it needs quite a bit of work and um, certainly a pleasure to uh, send some money over there and get things cracking. And viewers, uh, we, we'll give you some hot pictorial highlights uh, coming up uh, in the not too distant future of uh, some of these redevelopments. But the, where, where we're talking up in uh, the Heighton area is um, you've got the Heighton Bowling Club on one corner, you've got the Heighton Tennis uh, Courts on another corner, which has had all new lighting put on it. Yeah. You've got the Alexander Thompson Cricket Club, you've got the Football Geelong Headquarters, you've got the Geelong Falcons Football Club and uh, all the junior development that goes on around there. So it's a, a multi-sported uh, precinct as well as community used as far as uh, a lot of walking and a lot of athletic activity uh, by the casual joggers and the casual walkers around there. So aesthetically and from a facilitation viewpoint, significant improvements and the big question that's in uh, floating around some of the circles, are we going to name the new pavilion up, a new headquarters up at Heighton Reserve, the Michael Turner Pavilion? We'll wait and see, Mick. Two new playgrounds also been included at Deakin Ward at the uh, Augustine Reserve and the Deakin Estate. Yes, we've got um, basically the Deakin Estate there is a growing uh, estate there. It's uh, tucked in that little pocket between Deakin and the Ring Road and it is really filled up now and you've got a lot of young families in there. So oh, it, was, it was great pleasure I um, was able to put a playground there and also the Augustine Reserve, which is up near... Um, the uh, retarding basin there as you come down South Valley Road. So another growing area and uh, it's good to see uh, that we're uh, investing in the playgrounds there. And the playgrounds, uh, viewers, are not just the old 
rubber tyre swings that you and I might remember <laughs> back in the old days and uh, a steel slide. These are state-of-the-art playgrounds. Yeah, they're very, uh, very much uh, in this day and age with uh, public liability. You've got to have everything 100%. Like you said, there's no more of the uh, rope and the rubber tyre. You can't get away with that these days. Um, so everything will be the, the proper plastic materials and everything will be um, right on the money. Down at the Queen's Park Complex, and what a magnificent part of uh, Geelong that is, a magnificent uh, viewing area of many, many different forms of activities. And one of them, the great game of cricket and also football. There's a particular oval down in the Queen's Park Complex known as the uh, D.F. Shore Oval, a wonderful oval that uh, has a high regard uh, as far as one of the best hard wicket playing surfaces in our great city of Geelong in the Geelong Cricket Association. And I understand there's been some reallocation of funds for new hard wicket training nets and also improvements to the Shore Oval. That's right, Graham. Where the cricket nets are at the moment, they're over on the uh, northern side of the ground in the northwest corner there. And they don't get a lot of sunlight, and that's a problem they have over there. So what we're going to do is move the nets from that corner over to where the practice um, putting greens are near the golf club. So they'll be on the southern end of the oval. They'll get a lot more sun, and they'll be able to grow the wicket, uh, the turf wicket uh, to a, a better standard. And it also gets rid, if you have a look, there's that concrete pad that comes out onto the oval. That will be removed over where the practice wickets are at the moment. And uh, also an upgrade of uh, water reuse program. Yeah, there's, there's um, $900,000 is in the budget. Uh, the development that's going across the road in the old cement works, that will have a uh, precinct-based water recycling plant in it. And what will happen as part of the Queen's Park Master Plan, there's uh, $900,000 in the budget to, for a pipe to come from that facility, the water recycling facility, across the river. And there'll be several uh, um, water basins or small dams built in the golf course as water features in the golf course and they will act to irrigate the course. And the city will be able to uh, access about 70 megalitre of, megalitres of Class A recycled water from that. Well, certainly the old two blues down there at Newtown and Chewell and the Geelong Amateur Football Club who uh, have continued use of those for their perspective, respective sports, but also the community use, because down at the, the D of Shore Oval, adjacent to it, is a great facility for family picnics. It's a covered in mm. area. There's barbecues available. Uh, the Highland Gathering is another uh, area that uh, uses that annually and uh, it's a terrific facility. Great to see Queen's Park coming on. The Friends of Buckley's Falls, one of the great areas uh, of our vegetated and uh, natural growth area around Geelong up at the Queen's Park Complex. Another $20,000 for maintenance works and revegetation. Yes, yeah, so the Friends do a fantastic job up there and the one advantage is that by giving that $20,000 to that organisation, Graham, what happens is that uh, all their work is volunteer work. So $20,000 for them goes so much further than if the city did that same work. It's all good news because it's surplus in the city of Greater Geelong and it's 2009 2010 city budget. As we go to a break, we'll be back with Councillor Andrew Kados talking about planning and finance in his portfolio and the budget highlights for the coming year. Back shortly.